Uh, where does it go? Does it go to the Nigerian market? Where? Of course, it goes to the Nigerian market. Okay. That's where it goes to. But our problem is the livelihood of the people. Yeah. After this season, and that's why I'm happy you're here, because we need help. Our government do not have the capacity to help us. No. Whether we like it or not, if we make this part of the world safe, people will not be running to your area and inconveniencing you. No. So why do you wait to use immigration to stop them? People want to survive. Of course. How many people can immigration stop? So why don't United Nations come and help us with the aid of our government? If we build modular refinery, we cannot be having crude oil and we're looking for fuel. Mm -hmm. We're looking for jet fuel. Mm -hmm. We're looking for diesel to run our industries. No. So and it's not a very it's not expensive uh, technology. It's not. $100,000, you can bring a small volume of a, a modular refinery that will not uh, deplete the environment. And so that's why we are pleading that people should come to our aid because very soon people will be dropping on the streets, dying. Okay, now see, somebody has come to plant corn. Corn there, wow, yeah. Unknown to the person that that is death. Mm. I can't eat that corn because I'm aware of the consequences of eating that corn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the person that planted that corn does not know the consequences because it's not indicated. It has no other option. It has no other option. Mm -hmm. no other option. Mm -hmm. You just find out that people have abandoned their land because this land we are taken by force mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. these young men. They are armed. They are armed, fully armed. Mm -hmm. So you can't, in fact, who, some community people have not come to this area for like six, seven, eight years because if they see you here, they behead you. But they don't want you to see what they are doing, except doing. you're part of them. Yeah. So the whole soil is contaminated. But our people must survive. How do we not survive? What do you do to help us survive? So this is, just to explain, uh, Thomas Keeler from the EU delegation. I work for the European Union. Yes. We have assembled a small team. My friend Peter over here from Brussels. Tarilla is a friend from uh, Bayelza. He's also yes. helping with the research. Yes. And Ms. Ketcher Jacob, uh, uh, Jacobson from Copenhagen. Yeah. But essentially, we want to create a new project for the EU in the Niger Delta. Yes. And so we've come here to see for our, with our own eyes what is the situation. And we'll go home and inform Brussels and our superiors and how we might develop a program and a project in the region. As you might be aware, the EU has been a long-standing partner in the region. Yes. We've had a big project. It was called the Niger Delta Support Program. 250 million euros we used since 2010 to now. It's finished. So we need to develop an, a new strategy, a new plan. So that's why we're here, to learn from the experiences on the ground, to hear from you, from other citizens and many stakeholders. What are the issues and how can we help? First of all, most importantly, what we need now, we need good hospitals to save the life of these people. Yeah. Yes, the governor has built, a has built a cardiovascular hospital, but how many people can that take based on the resources he has? Mm -hmm. But we believe that in your program, if you come now because Ishepo is a critically impacted environment and you drop one of these hospitals for us, you would have saved that problem. Mm -hmm. Because I am telling you, the illnesses will start coming very soon. Mm -hmm. It's not now. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the next two, three years, people start dropping on the streets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to build a facility mm -hmm. to take care of them. We yeah. spoke with a doctor this morning, yeah. and he told us about increasing birth defects, babies already being affected. Exactly. He was speaking with someone at Abuja with that exact same question. So when is this going to happen? He said, no, it's happening now. Okay. The, the, the doctors examined all the babies and saying that the situation is bad already. It's so bad because, because everybody's already hailing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I'm talking to you now, I don't even know the state of my health. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know because I'm living here. The security men also, and that's why we are saying those who are even involved in the business, mm -hmm. they're not, they're living here, their children are also living here, mm -hmm. but they're hungry. Mm -hmm. They will tell you there's no job. Mm -hmm. But my late father said, you don't say because there's no job, you go to the marketplace and steal. <coughs> You'll be treated like a thief. It's better you go and beg. Madam, I don't have food, I don't have job. Can I eat? Can you give me food to eat? Mm -hmm. It's understandable. Mm -hmm. Than to say you go and steal because you don't have uh, food. It's not our culture. So what we're saying is that most importantly, we need to create medical facilities now to save lives. Then, in your model, if you can, you know, what I know my people in Africa do is, well, once they see you, like the EU now comes and build one modular refinery now, and say, okay, this modular refinery costs us $1 million. 
to build and the seat has been achieved, everybody will start making moves and will start building. We will not wait for the big refinery. They don't have the money. No. The one that we have, the people receiver told us they are doing turn around maintenance. Nothing is happening there. Nothing. I am, I am a local, my name is Dr. Wano Suge Samuel. I'm a local government chairman. Local, I am saying it on television. Nothing. They are doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You can come and take you there and see. Nothing. If they are doing something, I will, I will, I will be shorting of petrol. Mm -hmm. We have crude oil yet. We are exporting, uh, we are exporting uh, finished products from abroad, overseas. Mm -hmm. Just make sense. So one of the things you must target in your program, we need hospital facility. Yeah. We need bottled refinery. And maybe we need schools to educate our people the more. Mm -hmm. These are the three fronts we should tackle it from. Yeah. Any other thing, it will just be no effort. No. But I can tell you, what we need now is healthcare. Key. Healthcare. <coughs> Want to say something to me? I just had a question about we did a, we met with a lot of different stakeholders, and everyone mentioned unemployment. Would you have any other suggestion for employment possibilities other than the ones that would be employed in the refineries? First of all, unemployment is a big issue mm -hmm. all over Africa. Mm -hmm. And no government can tell you that it can solve the problem of unemployment at a go. But there are things you do, it will be solving itself. For instance, when the vice president came, we engaged him. We said, sir, instead of arresting and maybe destroying these people, let's change the orientation. Give them licenses. Okay, your license is on diesel. Your model and finance should concentrate in uh, diesel. And let me even inform you. There's a company called MDPR. Mm -hmm. It's a local company. They are running a modular refinery. Mm -hmm. But they are producing without destroying the environment because they are using the right uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and in that NDPR, they have over 2,000 persons working there. Oh, really? It's job. Wow. So if you produce, look at this rubbish they are doing here. I've just yeah. told you they are close to about 500 persons here working, mm -hmm. illegal work. So why don't we legitimate the job? Let's make a job. We've read books how Boston was built. Mm -hmm. Boston was built by money from uh, uh, alcohol peddlers and uh, drug peddlers. <laughs> yes, we read the books. But the American, what they do? They turned it around and made it legitimate. <laughs> and today, the high rises in Boston are built from there. Mm -hmm. So we can build from here. Mm -hmm. And we need to change the rotation of our people. So if you say you want to create a program that will create jobs, how will you create jobs? Jobs are created by actions or day-to-day -day activities of a man. Mm -hmm. That's how jobs are created. So when we do the modular refineries, we will create the jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to do modular refineries because this is what they understand. The yeah, crude yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. But how many people are involved in the modular refinery business? For now, nobody. Apart from this one, I told no, you, yeah, NDPR. Yeah, no, but okay. Let, let, let's say hypo hypothetically, you build a modular refinery, and it's uh, okay. There's somebody that will do transportation. Yeah. Somebody will cook food. Somebody will do bagging. So for the people who work, depends on the size. Depend on the size, and it doesn't have to be one. It has to be so many, because this is what we have here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the truth. And then my follow-up question yes. <laughs> is the business model, because right now the illegal oil refinery is is free. You, you take the free oil and then you can sell it. But if it's legalized, modular refinery would be a legal form. Yes. You would have to pay some concessions, maybe, to the, to the That is where we, 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 government needs to under, also understand. Uh, subs sub subsidy, uh, not okay. the criminal-minded subsidy they are telling us yeah. about. Though. But you know, the real subsidy is, okay, now look, oh, a barrel of uh, crude oil is sold at this. Yeah. But because you're a local refinery, a refiner, we will give you 40% uh, discount. Okay. You understand what yeah. I'm making? Then... It is a win-win. If that is done, it's win-win because nobody wants to go and steal. Mm. Nobody wants to go and break the... I will take you to go and show you the main, mm -hmm. the, the main trunk line. Running from Numegbe to Rupoku. It's one of the biggest trunk lines. But when once they produce and put on that line, the boys will go and bust the line. And because they don't have the good technology, they bust the line, it will pour in on the, on the ground, destroying the environment. So the government should also understand. The federal government... When, after, see, when once we agree, we must do this. Mm -hmm. All this matter will just end. Kidnapping will go. Because everybody, people are tired of committing crime. Yeah, they don't yes. want to. Yes, they don't want to. People want to get some money and relax. But because nobody gives them an opportunity, they will not want to be hungry. They rather die than to be hungry. That's the truth. Basically, that's 